Uh, coming up next at 645, folks, we have the Nice Guys Show. Please give a warm round of applause to your hosts. And they're coming into the room right now along with their comedians. So give it up one time for the very funny Aaron Ring and his co-host, Kate Hester. Oh. Oh, muted. Oh my God, I'm gonna rehearse. I'm gonna repeat myself now. Hey guys, welcome oh. to this guy's show. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> yes, take it away, Aaron. All right, here's a warning. <laughs> You're muted. Um, that said, uh, happy 420, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Woo! If, yeah. Indulging. Woo! Yeah. If you're indulging, I hope you guys got the uh, the kosher for for twenty weed. Um, it's got the real instead of the high fructose corn syrup. It is much much better. Um, let me just uh, get started right away. Uh, so a few minutes for you here. I'm um, I'm not saying that Bernie Madoff was murdered. I'm just trying to start that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody here has talent, and thank God for that, because mine is plagiarism. Um, I, I, I tell people I live in New York, but I'm spending the pandemic in Massachusetts. And the thing is, I, I've been here for over a year now. I, I need to come to terms with the fact that I, I probably live here now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's tough because for the past 27 years, New York has been my entire identity. Uh, which means I'm both pretentious and boring. <laughs> um, I, I actually, I did go back to New York uh, very recently to get my first shot. It was heroin. <laughs> uh, the side effects are, are pretty harsh, but I'm ready for my second shot. Oh, I, I am really <laughs> um, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize how much I'd miss New York. I mean, not, not everything. Like I hate it when people cut their nails on the subway and then don't offer me any. I <laughs> <laughs> just think about New York, people are selfish. By, by the end of the year, I usually have less than 10 bucks in my cup. <laughs> I, I used to get so nervous in front of audiences. So nervous. So I came up with this, uh, with this I, I think, pretty good trick. I like to picture the entire audience crucified. <laughs> um, and then I, I feel better because I, I know Jesus loves me. Uh, on, on that topic, I think Pentecostal snake handlers are a little crazy, right? Just, just a little crazy. And you know, <laughs> atheist snake handlers. <laughs> not gonna protect you. I'm, I'm not really religious. I, I mean, I am looking forward to the rapture, but mainly for the improved parking situation. <laughs> I, I think the difference between uh, an airplane and a model airplane is the eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whoever came up with that man, uh, you know, teach a man to fish, that guy is responsible for the cod shortage in the North Atlantic. So fuck that. <laughs> and you know, I'm saying guy. I mean, forgive me for giving the other genders the benefit of the doubt. Um, when, when I was a kid, my dad caught me smoking fish, and he made me smoke the whole pack. Uh this, this comedian I've, I've always, always liked, uh, Wendy Liebman. You, you got to check her out. She's awesome. Um, she, uh, she tweeted a joke uh, that he said was one of her very first jokes. And I replied to her tweet that I'd, I'd seen her tell that joke at Catch a Rising Star in Harvard Square in 1991. And that's how easy it is to become a stalker. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I said 1991, I'm 52 years old. And I don't think I look it, uh, but I do show my real age every time I end a tweet with a period. <laughs> uh, and then there's always these annoying reminders. Uh, 
The other day I was talking to this uh, college kid about the 20th century and he never heard of it. <laughs> uh, I, I have had a colonoscopy, which is an operation that you have after the age of 50 where uh, they remove your potential. I, uh, oh, I, yeah, I, the worst thing is I, I found out this kid I used to babysit for died in 1898. And, and now I feel old and haunted. Uh, well, at least he can't testify. <laughs> Guys, uh, life, life didn't give me one. Uh, I worked hard. I earned those lemons, which is why today I stand before you a lemon heir. <laughs> uh, in fact, right after this show, I'm going to be on lemon heir matchmaker. <laughs> uh, a lot of kids ask me for life advice and I tell them remember it's not work if you love being exploited <laughs> um, hey how many people is too many to die in gender reveal accidents I don't know I do know this if the reveal kills you the gender is masculine. <laughs> now this gets in the city is coming back. I thought I'd pitch sex in the country. <laughs> That's just the um, I'm, I'm going to a wedding in red state and I have no idea what color camo I'm going to wear. <laughs> All I know is I'm not going to wear white if I've already shot something. Uh, I recently attended a bar mitzvah on Zoom and the theme was quarterly sales goals. Uh, which, which Great for a bar mitzvah, but perfect for Zoom, right? <laughs> uh, hey, um, I don't really want to talk about politics, but but Biden and Harris say they're going to try to address white privilege. Here I am. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we have such a great show for you tonight. I am so thrilled about this lineup. And to get us started off, I'm going to introduce my wonderful co-host, Kate Hester. Yay. Thank you so much, Aaron. Uh, yes, you guys, happy 420. Uh, I usually don't smoke weed at all. Uh, it makes me very anxious and very paranoid, uh, which is why I really need to know why you guys are all mad at me. Uh, I don't know what, what the hell I did. Do I need to apologize for something? And I really wish that you would all stop talking shit about me behind my back, you know, because I know that's what you're doing. And I thought we were friends and I'm really sorry if I made you mad. And that's exactly what it's like to be around me when I smoke weed. So I don't do it. Woo. Uh, but yes, I'm having sex with the human resources guy at my job. Woo! Yes! <laughs> Good gig yeah. if you can get it. Yeah, if, you get guy, <laughs> if you can get the guy who gives lectures on sexual harassment to squeeze your ass in the break room, you're, good, you're golden. You can do whatever you want. I'm, I'm late every day. I'm the one eating everybody's yogurts from the fridge. <laughs> Even those post-it notes, all right? Uh, actually, uh, none of that's true. Well, it's true that I'm banging the HR guy, but he's been my boyfriend of 10 years and I don't get away with shits. I never got away with anything. And uh, because of the virus now he's been furloughed. So he's no longer the HR guy. Now he's just the janitor of our house. <laughs> um, he uh, went out and bought all the sherry and port uh, at the beginning of the virus for some reason. I don't know why. So I've been quarantined with Frasier this entire time, pretty much. <laughs> He's a musician. I always end up with musicians. My ex-husband was a musician. All the idiots that came in between were musicians. I have ingested so much musician semen in my adult lifetime that I just know how to play Wonderwall on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single lesson. It just came to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm uh, the only person at my job that keeps testing negative for COVID. Uh, all my coworkers have gotten it. I have not, knock on wood. Uh, I think it's because they're not inviting me to their orgies. <laughs> they're not. They've been, they've been checking our temperatures with those gun style thermometers every day that they point at your heads. 
And I was uh, shocked when I found that out because the security guard at my job's been checking mine rectally this whole time. <laughs> so, had to have an awkward conversation with human resources. And he's not even there. He's home on the couch drinking cognac. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he doesn't want to get married, uh, my boyfriend. So I'll never get that second divorce I've always wanted. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, anyway, uh, I had sex with this guy once. He was so boring. He just laid there in bed, uh, not doing anything. He didn't move. He didn't make any sounds. Uh, I was like, you're like having sex with a CPR dummy. Turns out it was a CPR dummy, and I'm not allowed back in that community center anymore. So, <laughs> and... Uh, uh, so it turns out that uh, I have all these <sighs> witchcraft friends, like all these people who are into witchcraft. I think that's like a, an artsy lady thing. I used to say artsy white lady thing, but then a woman of color was like, I'm into witchcraft. And I was like, all right, I'm sorry. And that's why I have a tail now. <laughs> Defended her. So uh, yeah, so uh, that's fine. I don't judge it. If you're a woman who's into witchcraft, that's fine. Knock yourself out. Uh, however, if I had one dude friend who's like, I'm a wizard, I'd be like, oh yeah, Mike, you're a wizard. <laughs> you're a fucking idiot is what you are. <laughs> you know? um, I was told uh, back when I had brown hair that I looked like a young Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> I was a little conflicted about this compliment. <laughs> it's like, yes, she was the greatest woman of our lifetime, but no, nobody thinks about her when they're jerking off, you know? <laughs> anyway, guys, that's enough of me. Woo, let's bring up your first comic. Woo, yes. She's amazing. She's one of our absolute favorites, and she's perfect to start the show off. You've seen her on Laughs on Fox. Please give it up for Taquita F Love. Woo! Taquita Love! Hey, what's up, y'all? Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Happy holidays Woo! to everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Big comedy. Uh, um, I... To, I, I wanted to partake in 420. Uh, I I actually have uh, for medicinal uh, purposes. I got some gummies. They're called uh, got some sour <laughs> peach gummies, right? And I'm just like I'm gonna I'm gonna get it together. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. And I told the person at the weed shop because I, I I purchased it like an adult um in the dispensary uh they gave I gave them my ID and everything I was like you know I just you know mm -hmm. I have nausea uh and I'm not, I'm not pregnant but I have nausea uh and I just needed something to help you know with uh the CBD component and I was like uh you know like I don't you know I don't want to get high I want to be healed, you know, like, and the, the dude was so pissed. He was like, what? You don't want to get high? He was like, and I was just like, I was like, I'm the lowest amount. No, this won't do nothing for my grandma. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, okay, well, your grandma can handle it. Let me just take, you know, let me take one for the team. And I tried, I tried it. I was so, I was sleep for three days off of one little gummy. Um, and I, I just like I like I don't want to be high. I want to be healed. That's it. I don't want to <laughs> not be able to move. I want to be able to move. You know, like to be able to enjoy life. Um, but anyway, to so everybody out there, I got so many family members. This is y'all holiday. Turn up, whatever you do, or turn down. You're gonna be <laughs> I don't have enough energy to do nothing. Um, my name is Taquita. I actually I have a sister named Shaquita. Uh, we not twins. <laughs> uh, my a 420 person um my brother's name is tyrone the baby of the family right the last one allison <laughs> <laughs> y'all my mama got clean and sober that's what happened uh, <laughs> she's like one of these kids gonna make it no we're all successful except allison she's a crackhead um 
<laughs> no, um, I actually, I, I celebrate the fact that my mom got clean. She uses the fact that she's in recovery to justify not doing motherly duties. Um, she has this saying where she's like, oh, I'm not gonna let you mess up my recovery. And that's her way of saying no. Um, I needed a ride from the airport. Uh, I was like, mom, can you pick me up from the airport? She's like, what time you need me to pick you up? Like my flight landed five i'll be ready by 5 30 well you know steve harvey on at that time <laughs> you're gonna have to get a lift or an uber or something look i'm not gonna let you mess up my recovery and it's like <laughs> yep, the airport would have made you so i got a lift all right it was um, something about me i'm a nurse praise him oh okay thank you Dan. Yeah, one person was like ah we we <laughs> Danny called it, and I, I understand the delay if everybody is high, if that's the case, but I'm just like, Danny's like, hallelujah, thank you, Danny. Uh, I, I work in a hospital, uh, which is the worst place to work when you want to call in sick. <laughs> yeah. No matter what's wrong with you, they can fix it there. Mm -hmm. They don't never give us time off. You know, I tried to call in, I'll be trying. I'm like, hey, it's Taquita. I'm not gonna be able to make it tonight. I'm not feeling good. And it's like, well, what's wrong with you, Taquita? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm having some upper respiratory congestion. <laughs> they think about it for a second. They're like, well, just come in about you know five minutes early. Uh, Sean gonna set up a respiratory treatment. You know, we short staff, girl. Just come on in. It's just like they don't ever give us time off of work. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, like I said, I'm a nurse. I'm at the point in my career, though, that when I clock out of work, I want to clock out of nursing, but won't nobody let me. Uh, even at home, my boyfriend always asking, you know, like, can you, you think you could put on a little nurse's outfit? <laughs> 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 you know, he expects, you know, the Halloween costume. <laughs> I'll just come to bed in my scrubs and my N95 and be like, look, do you want this? <laughs> <laughs> get back up and go to work you know they're not giving me no time off. um yeah when i clock out of work i want to clock out of nursing nobody will let me even my family uh, my dad was in an accident and we had Can like we traumatic surgery yes we need to make him the co-host i told him to come back in this room so we can make him a co-host who's that is Can that kate co -host, please hey. oh, not me. oh uh, who, who needs to be made the co-host yeah, someone needs to meet themselves who's talking about co-host yeah. That's Joey. Please mute, mute yourself. I, I'm just like, uh, make me a co-host, please. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened, but you know it's 420, so anything goes on this show. Everything's forgiven. Like nothing is taken personal. It's like we out here, uh, and I'm not really out here. I'm on my, I'm on my gummies a little bit. Um, but like I said, as a nurse, uh, when I clock out of work, I want to clock out of nursing. Nobody will let my family. Uh, my dad was in the, my dad was in the hospital. He had an emergency surgery. I guess he told all his nurses that I was a nurse. So when I got to the hospital, everybody went on break. Uh, <laughs> they was like, here's his chart. He, she got it. It was just like, uh, first thing my dad says to me when he sees me, uh, he's like, oh, you know, Taquita, I need you to pass me the urinal. I need you to help me pee. Uh, I didn't tell y'all my dad lost an arm in this accident. So the nurse in me, I know he needed help, but I don't want to have to help him because I don't want to have to see or touch my daddy dick. Um, <laughs> there were other people in the room that had seen his dick before. Like I said, he had just got out of surgery. My grandmother was there. My mom was there. My stepmom was there. I'm looking at them like, y'all gonna make me take this for the team? <laughs> my daddy doing a relationship. Uh, so I tried to rationalize. I asked my my granny. My, my grandma was like, <clears throat> You know, old people make noises and we just leave them alone. Like, oh. <laughs> I asked my, then I asked my stepmom, you know, her name is Cookie. I was like, Cookie, you know, can you help dad use the bathroom? She's like, well, I don't know what to do with that. So I gave her the urinal, right? I'm like, a Cookie is like a cup, right? You put his thing in the thing and he'll pee. And she's like, well, Saquita, you the nurse. I said, Cookie, that's your dick. <laughs> you want somebody else to mess with the oh, yeah. then i then i asked my mom my mom picks this time out of all times to be petty she gonna look at my stepmom hmm. that ain't my dick no more 
<laughs> y'all don't have to figure it out. Look, I'm not gonna let y'all mess up my recovery. <laughs> Hey, y'all. <laughs> that is my time i'm so happy to have been here thank you so much enjoy the rest of y'all day turn up whatever you do uh thank you for having me for 20. yeah yes taquita love everyone let's give it up for taquita love okay a little bit of housekeeping um if you are here for uh, noah gottlieb's five dollar mic uh you can get there via the breakout room link in the bottom of this room but but don't because this is a much better show um <laughs> well no i'm not but you know if you're there go um our next comic coming to the zoom screen uh is a very 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 nice person uh, you can catch her in a film currently streaming on Amazon Prime, but she didn't tell us which film, so I'll <laughs> put it in the chat. Uh, please welcome Lana Seidel. Seidel. Thank hear. you. No, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Everyone's been so great. Oh. Tell you, uh, oh, my camera's been turned off. Um, okay. I didn't even turn it off. All right. Uh, somebody turned my camera off. Okay. Um, let's try to get this going. Uh, can I start your video? Um, um, you know what? It's okay. It doesn't have to be recorded. Um, yeah, sorry, what's going yeah. on? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. I don't think it's allowing for my phone to uh, to have the, the recording. Um, so let's Lana, see. Was yes. just working a minute ago. Uh, put your camera on. We'll take care of it. Yeah, I'm trying to get it on, and it's saying it's not allowed to. Sorry, guys. Uh, you cannot start your video because the host has disabled it. I don't know why. Hmm, weird. Huh. Maybe it's my phone, too. I'm something. so sorry about no, that. No, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, this, this set has Hold been on. going Hold well. On. Let me uh, check. Okay. okay. Do you want to pause me and go to someone else? Or whatever you guys want. Yeah. Give us one second. Okay. All right. Hey. Yay. Yay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Not, not my best opener, but I'll try. Yes. I'll try to make it up, guys. Yes. Well, we Thank over. you. I'm so yeah. sorry. Start over. No, don't be sorry, guys. It's it's. Really? I still got to tell you. Uh, you know. Um, this is great. I love. I love all these shows. I hope they stay. I hope virtual stays. I hope all the uh, park th stuff stays, the outdoor, the indoor. Cause um, I got to like, we did a lot of like park shows this summer. There was a lot of like, really fun park events. Um, and now every time I go by a park, I get so excited. Uh, that's probably what pedophiles feel like. <laughs> so much opportunity, so much opportunity. Um, so my parents finally got vaccinated. Yay. I'm getting my second Woo! shot. Thank you guys. Yes, we're all gonna see each other live. I'm um, getting my second one next week. You know, my parents uh, got theirs last week. They could have gotten it months ago, but instead they decided to go to like an empty warehouse in Bushwick at three in the morning. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were at a sex party. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think uh, Tequita was talking about her parents. You know, I think my parents, I think the Feldmans really love a great sex party. <laughs> I had to look it up. I uh, they they went um, a couple of days ago to get their second shot at twelve a.m. into that empty warehouse, and you know, oddly enough, they called it the Midnight Moderna. <laughs> strange, very strange. Uh, I'm onto them. Um, so, one of the things that made a really big impact on me uh, in college was uh, when I read the book Malcolm X. First of all, instead of reading it for three weeks, I read it for three years. <laughs> when we used to take the train, I'd make sure that everybody would see me reading it um, because like that was my original thirst trap. Um, I don't know, guys, that, you know, he starts off by talking about how much he really likes this chubby Jewish girl. I was hooked. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys read, you know, read it, but like, you know, the rest of it with the Islam, Shmislam, he'll convert. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah, we're talking about names. Yeah, I so I used to be a Latin dancer. I was ranked seventh in the United States. My peers aren't dancing with the stars, but I had the worst Latin dancer stage name ever. It was uh, Svetlana Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it was so embarrassing. Uh, the announcer, every time he'd be like, and now dancing the sexy cha-cha-cha, Svetlana Feldman? <laughs> I can't be right. Hmm. Um, so yeah, as a Latin dancer, sadly, I never got my quinceanera. Yeah, but I uh, I did have a lot of eating disorders. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you. I <laughs> uh, I actually had bulimia, which I'm very proud of to this day, because uh, that's the only thing that Princess Diana and I have in common. <laughs> so. I don't know. You guys are looking at royalty, uh, royalty from Brooklyn. I actually uh, grew up in Brooklyn. I still live here. Um, I know I look like the problem, <laughs> but uh, I'm getting priced out as well. Um, I actually, I came from Ukraine when I was seven uh, because of institutionalized anti-Semitism. Like my passport, my seven-year-old passport, it didn't even say citizen. It just said Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, parentheses in front, leave. And that's a little, <laughs> that was a little excessive, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've been listening to rap since I was little. By the way, the, the film I'm in is uh, The Businessman, and it's got a couple of members from the Wu-Tang. I know there's a lot, um, and uh, a couple of other uh, rappers. So I, I really love rap. Uh, I've been listening to it since I was little. Um, I don't know if you guys listen to like Jay-Z's, one of his last albums, but it's been super relatable because um, in that album, he's just complaining about how he should have bought cheaper real estate in Brooklyn 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just love that Jay-Z is becoming an old Jewish man. Yeah, Because he's like, you know, he's like, I could have bought a place in Dumbo before it was Dumbo for two million. That same building today is worth over 25 million. <laughs> How do you think I feel? <laughs> Dumbo. Um, I don't know who's, uh, who's got their sound on, but uh, let's play a really, really fun game, guys. Who said it, Jay-Z or an old Jewish man? Are we ready? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. You want to know what's better than throwing away all your money at the strip club? Credit. Yeah. <laughs> Jay-Z. I know it's mixed. I know it's actually Jay-Z, but Jewish. I was like, Dad? I was like, Dad? Is that you? Is that you, Dad? I actually, my parents, I uh, um, you know, from Ukraine, I, I, I that's my excuse for them because I I don't think they understand what stand-up is. I showed my dad a video of myself years back, and uh, he looked at it for a good few minutes and he was like, Sveta, this jazz job interview mm. it's very confused um <laughs> i showed my mom a video and she was about to retire uh and, from dentistry and she just had a whole bunch of threats for me she was like i will do comedy now <laughs> um, <laughs> and then she was like take me to comedy central she thinks that's how comedy works in america when you start out <laughs> yeah um yeah uh so yeah we've been getting some some mix of good news bad news i was uh really sad about dmx um but then i heard you know a couple of weeks ago uh i don't know if you guys know bobby Schmurda. he's a rapper for brooklyn um he was uh released from prison and, and uh, i gotta tell you i love his music but when i first heard his name bobby Schmurda. I was like, oh, finally, a great Jewish rapper I can get behind. Because, <laughs> like, uh, in my house, guys, the, the word shmurda means something totally different. It's, you know, when you smear too much cream cheese on a bagel. <laughs> and it's like, oh, Bobby, you shmurda that bagel. <laughs> and uh, you didn't bring the lox. Get up out my trap house. I've been eating lox since like the fifth grade. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kate and Aaron. This was so fun. Yes. Yeah. Come on, give it up one more time Thank for Lana. <laughs> So awesome. All right. Our next comic is, again, one of the nicest, greatest comics you can meet. We love him so much. He's a nice guy's family. You know him from the Broadway Comedy Club. Give it up for Danny Suggs. Yay, Danny. 
Fuck you, Kate. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Happy 420. Happy 420. I'm very excited, you know, to be here. Lana said that she's in a movie that's streaming, and I, too, am in a movie that's streaming. It's called Cookies and Dick. It's on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> like 30 days because the bills have got to get paid <laughs> I like five six pens for anybody that's interested I'm very very stressed that. I haven't spoke yet only because I knew I was coming to this show but let me tell you what I've been dealing with for the past 48 hours I got hacked my Instagram oh. got hacked oh. and you know what's worse than getting hacked thinking you went viral <laughs> at, at 10 p.m i went to bed i had 1630 followers i woke up to 14,000. i was like lobster for everybody <laughs> walking around like i was a teflon dan <laughs> so as soon as this is over i'm hitting that pipe and i'm hitting that pipe hard mm -hmm. uh, uh so for those that don't know me uh People have to say that being a comedian is the hardest job in the world. And I beg to differ. The hardest job I've ever had was trying to locate the G-spot. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so tough that today, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> this Friday got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. Oh, but <laughs> <laughs> Some of you guys are not into hip hop out there, huh? <laughs> well, well, this is why we march. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to say that. So I'm um, very close to my family and I talked to my dad after an appointment he had and uh, he gave me some devastating news. It's life altering to me and quite possibly everybody else in here at some point in your lives. My 81 year old dad doesn't have to renew his license again until he's 93. <laughs> 93. And all he had to do to get it was pay $10 to take a vision test. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an idea, Department of Motor Vehicles. How about giving a test to see if he still gives a fuck? How about that? <laughs> I don't know about your dad, but the older my dad gets, the less he cares about things. He's retired, and he likes to take road trips, which means every time he gets behind the wheel, all of us in here, just things in the way. <laughs> I've never been in a car with him once as a family. He's like, oops, speed bump. I was like, speed bump? The speed bump bleed? <laughs> Shout out to my dad little mind work that you might need to say hey sir vet the vet um so yeah i'm gay wish my parents have been this quiet about it <laughs> <laughs> i was born gay but i but i had some help i blame the cinematic masterpiece the outsiders because the cast which is gay and trapping matt <laughs> dylan tom cruise and Emilio Estevez. i mean how much can a boy take <laughs> <laughs> there are only two women in the whole movie there were more women in Shawshank. <laughs> I even go on record and say that I was pulled out the closet. Patrick Tom Cruise running around in sleeveless skirts. I was just a boy. <laughs> yeah, some people know this, but I have a twin brother. We're identical in every way, except he likes to play ball, and I like to play with balls. <laughs> in high school, we used to be known as the Wonder Twins. But after me and I having a girlfriend for two years, I became known as the I Wonder Twin. <laughs> Thank God this is before the cell phone. This is before the cell phone. I guess you guys heard uh, the verdict about, you know, the Chauvin case, you know, this it's just not hysteria, you know, in the streets, but, you know, it's been a tough time for us all during the pandemic. And, you know, in 2019, you know, the tip of everybody's tongue was white privilege. But I want to talk about black privilege. Black privilege <laughs> is putting on a hoodie and getting the whole elevator to yourself. <laughs> All right, I know your allies, you can laugh because I got two more, so get ready. Black privilege. Black privilege is wearing all black in a major department store and getting help from all the employees <laughs> at the same time. I got one more from my white counterpart, fellas. Black privilege is knowing your white male roommates are going to try to borrow all your stuff, except your condoms. Did I go too far? <laughs> Did I go? Too far. <laughs> um, yeah, I was in the closet for 27 years. Uh, I was so closeted that I used to sneak gay magazines into my parents' house, and then I get paranoid and set them on fire in the backyard. <laughs> that is so the neighbors caught me and told everybody that I was into witchcraft. <laughs> they called it a black magic. 
<laughs> Which is also the name of the magazine. <laughs> all right, all right. Two people in the Negro porn. I am happy. To <laughs> very, very happy. Anybody out there have parents over sixty-five? Mm. All right, I'm just gonna say it. Now is the time to start checking the expirates and dates and all the food in that house. <laughs> now I'm not talking shit. I'm trying to save lives and hear me out. Last time I was home, I decided to do a little yard work for my parents. You know they're getting up here in age. So I'm cleaning up the gutters. I've been all set all day long. So finally I'm finishing, I'm walking back into the house. My mom stops me and she's like, oh, Tandy, the yard looks so good. I said, well, thanks, mom. She said, do you want something to cool off? And I was like, sure. Next thing I know, she comes around the corner with a box of Jell-O pudding pops. What's that you said? You didn't know they still made Jell-O pudding pops? They don't. Again, I'm not talking shit. Danny's just trying to save lives. I remember waking up one morning, she's like, Danny, let me fix you a nice big breakfast. I was like, mom, it's Sunday, you're retired. Go put your feet up, I got this. She says, okay, well, there's some cereal in the kitchen. And Dina found the cereal, but I did not expect to be greeted by Caitlyn Jenner on the box. She has the box, <laughs> but she's not supposed to be on the box. Because <laughs> here's the thing about cereal. Growing up, I was forced to eat Cheerios because I was told that they were a fun, wholesome breakfast that helped you grow. Only thing that grew is my desire to be a 10-year-old runaway. <laughs> I have no idea why they would call a cereal that tastes like depression Cheerios. <laughs> now, once did I leave that breakfast table feeling chipper? And I should have known something was up. I should have known something was up because the mascot wasn't a frog. It wasn't a leprechaun. It was a bowl of cereal. <laughs> she put a picture of a bowl of cereal on a box of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one night going over to my buddy Jimmy Nipples' house to sleep over. And yes, that was his real name. The next morning, his mom sat us down to eat. And I was like, dessert for breakfast? I was more confused about that than the fact that I might have been gay. <laughs> um, so the first time I had sex with a woman, that was pretty devastating. Because it was also the first time that I had asparagus. Nobody warned me. <laughs> I went to the bathroom to relieve myself. And I was like. Boy, pussy is powerful. <laughs> hey, you've been a fantastic audience. Thank you for having me. Give it up for Eric. No, no I'm sorry, Aaron and Kate, one more time. Uh, serves me right for getting on his wrong name wrong. Um, thank you for Danny Suggs. Danny Suggs, let's hear it. Um, Guys, uh, it brings me uh, a lot of joy to bring up this uh, this next comic. Uh, you might have seen her on Comedy Central. Uh, she is from Boston originally. Please give it up for Erin McGuire. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you guys so much for coming to the Zoom tonight. I know you had no other choice. <laughs> so what else were you going to do? You were going to go to your mailbox or this, and you made the right choice. Um, anybody over 65 on this Zoom, I just I want to make you guys feel comfortable. And I'm going to start this Zoom the way I start every Zoom with my parents. Oh, God. <laughs> Alexa, do I have glaucoma? <laughs> no, you don't have glaucoma because it's 420, motherfuckers. 420. <laughs> I I don't know. Look, I built a bar in my basement. So I am not, I mean, I appreciate the weed, but I'm not a weed uh doer. I really I just like the booze. It's an Irish thing. Um <laughs> Yeah, I built a bar in this basement in the beginning of the pandemic because I saw where this was going. And uh, I'm the smartest person in America right now. I was like, if this is going to go down, I want to pretend I'm living in an Applebee's. <laughs> so sign me up for whatever you got. I love a Zoom show, you guys, because when I, when I flop, I can just walk to my bed. <laughs> and and it's just refreshing because I spent the summer doing shows in Central Park and, and I love Central Park because it's the one place you can see people doing meth and Tai Chi <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can't tell the difference <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. 
<laughs> What's that guy doing? Standing crane? Nope, nope. He's just been trying to pick up that napkin for the last three days. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy to be here. Fully vaxxed. I'm fully vaxxed. It Woo! has happened. Yes, Woo! thank you. Uh, I'm a Moderna girl living in a Moderna world. Uh, <laughs> My my parents just got the vaccine. My father got Moderna. My mother got Pfizer. So now they think they're in a mixed marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I'm from Boston, so that's as good as it gets. <laughs> I didn't know Boston wasn't diverse until I moved to New York. And then I was like, oh, in Boston, diversity is white people of different heights. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. Uh, I am very happy to be vaccinated. The locations to get the vaccine are bonkers. I had a choice of a Walgreens or an abandoned Sears. Honest <laughs> 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 to God, I got a life-saving vaccine in an abandoned Sears. <laughs> it gave me the option of Moderna or Kenmore. I went with the Kenmore. It had a two-year warranty. <laughs> it's just good planning. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and I'm New York City based comic. And a lot of people said during this pandemic that New York is dead. And I'm like, no, New York is not dead because if it was, we would step over it and ignore it on the way to work. <laughs> <laughs> New York will never be dead because there's things you can do there you can't do anywhere else in the world. You know, I kicked a pigeon. <laughs> you can't do that in Idaho. It's their currency. <laughs> and you see things there you can't see anywhere else in the world. I saw a woman chasing after a rat with a butterfly net going, gonna eat like kings tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and you see that anywhere else in the world, you call the cops. But you see that in New York and you're like, oh, she's keto. <laughs> so i'm glad to be and we're we're officially back because uh, i got cat called in my mask the other day <laughs> new york is back baby <laughs> i love a guy who cat calls in a mask because that's a guy with no standards <laughs> he says i can only see one third of your face and i'm fine with it <laughs> <laughs> you know some guys are ass men some guys like boobs but this guy's like i'm into foreheads <laughs> foreheads are my thing and I like your forehead I want in on this but to be honest like all of my cat calls were shit before this I was running down the street one day and a guy went redhead running <laughs> <laughs> that's not cat calling that's narrating <laughs> like he's the Morgan Freeman of cat callers you know <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm a comic in New York, but I live in New Jersey because things are going well. And I live down the street from a Chili's because things are going really well. And, uh, in the beginning of this pandemic, Chili's put out a sign that says, Chili's is concerned about your health. <laughs> really? Uh, when has Chili's ever been concerned <laughs> about your health they have a salad that has the word explosion in it <laughs> the second part of the sign says and we're concerned about public safety that's why Chili's is offering curbside margaritas. <laughs> it says public health and safety, like 24 ounces of shit bar pour tequila delivered to the window of your Camry. <laughs> and that is feeling good in the neighborhood. <laughs> it explains New Jersey drivers, though, because New Jersey, it's everybody's using their cars like a battering ram. You know, like the state bird of New Jersey should be a dented Toyota Corolla. <laughs> no one's driving a full original car out here too and they're really proud about it too you know it's like what do you drive oh i drive a volvo but it's got the hood of a mercedes <laughs> it's a weird shit state and i've been driving around a lot lately and you can always tell when you go into a different state because of the digital highway signs and the higher north you go the cuter they get you know you get into connecticut and everything is a poem it's like, don't text and drive, you'll stay alive. <laughs> don't make us ask, please wear a mask. <laughs> Passover 
into the New Jersey state line and it's like, put your fucking mask on, put your goddamn phone down and pay attention to the road. <laughs> to New Jersey, <laughs> dick. <laughs> <laughs> and I always put my maps app on when I travel. I'm a fan of Waze. Clap it up if you like Waze. The Woo! Waze app. Woo! Yeah. Because I don't like Google Maps app because it's like getting directions from your grandfather. You know? <laughs> it's like, oh, you want to go to Maine? Well, that'll take you four hours by motor car. Six by stagecoach. <laughs> and if you want to walk, well, you should have left yesterday. <laughs> but Waze is like your friend in the back seat whose edible just kicked in. <laughs> you know? Oh, there's a Dunkin' Donuts 2.5 miles from here. You want me to take you there? I'll take you there. <laughs> Just a left and a right, and you drive through some dude's living room. <laughs> oh, God, there's cops in 500 feet. Are they still there? 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 <laughs> what I love about doing these Zoom shows, I mean, I, I, I like Zoom shows, but live shows, the difference is the audience feedback that you get immediately after a show. And I did a live mm -hmm. show recently and a guy comes up to me and he goes, you know what I like about you? You don't care how you look. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that kind of instant feedback that I miss. So I just want to, you know, wrap this up by, by letting you guys feel some of the joy that comics get to feel after a show. So uh, I just want to let you guys know how you've done as an audience, kind of as a the general things. So if you want to put your thing on gallery view, so you get if you're over 65, don't put it on gallery view. You'll never get it back. Uh, <laughs> all right, Alex H. I see that you're rocking that sweet Casio keyboard in the back there, and you're working out your sweet tunes. Fun fact about Alex H. He hasn't left his house since well before the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> Olga Gersh and Sean, oh look at you. You're like the Meryl Streep of Zoom, aren't you? You look very. Uh, studious and I saw you earlier walking around your house with uh, with uh, the, the Zoom <laughs> on and, and making everybody feel like they're going to puke. Good for you, Olga. Oh, look, somebody <laughs> highlight you. Good for you. Uh, Ralph Anthony, I know you're new to the room, but thank God you have a big list of things to do behind you. To buy lettuce uh, and, and uh, stop masturbating in front of my daughter. Ah, good, Ralph Anthony. Wonderful. Uh, Spiegel Mania. Glad that you also joined. And, and definitely don't try to dress up your background, whatever you do. That man completely keeps women in his basement. Uh, all right. And finally, Esther Forrester, David Sachs, Eric Askenazy. As, and uh, let's see, uh, Olga, David. Uh, I, yeah, I want to see you to feel your presence here on the Zoom tonight. So whatever you do, don't turn on your screen. Oh, hi, Olga, how you doing? All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming to the Zoom tonight. Take care, I'm Aaron McGuire. Woo! Woo! Yes! All right, give it up for Erin one more time. She's the best, the, the best crowd work Zoom I've ever seen. <laughs> So uh, yes, very excited to bring up your next comic. Again, one of the nicest comedians you could ever meet. One of our favorites. She's coming at you from Mexico and you've seen her on Bravo TV. Give it up for Christiana Jackson. Woo! Hey. Woo! Well, give it up for Aaron and Kate, especially because Kate has already seen this set a few minutes ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing. Somehow I've been on um, three, four, 20 shows. And I don't smoke weed. <laughs> Wonder why that happened. Um, <laughs> it's about the hair. Uh, I will say this. I do love doing Zoom <coughs> because to me, there's nothing funnier than watching somebody chop down their dinner as I'm trying to resuscitate my dreams. <laughs> That's comedy, folks. <laughs> oh, the gee, you were going in for like two sets, dude. What were you eating? Were they cookies? What was that? <laughs> uh, it was an orange. An orange. Healthy. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I don't know why it took you so long to eat it, but you know, steroids in our food. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> So like I said, I don't smoke weed, but today is actually like a super important day for me because five years ago today, I paid off my student loans. Woo. Woo. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And then a week after I had sex with a homeless man. <laughs> he was Puerto Rican, which doesn't explain why he was homeless, 
but it does explain <laughs> why I had sex with him. Oh my God. <laughs> I love a Puerto Rican man. <laughs> you know why? Because they've got thick but comfortable dicks, right? <laughs> 40, man. I can't have them banging around my pipes anymore. Lana knows what I'm talking about. Lana, hook me up. We used, yeah. used to do Latin dancing, and I had nothing, no dick from you, all right? Next time I, I want a list of men. Anyway, um, speaking of Latin America, yeah, like Kate mentioned, I am in Mexico right now. I'm joining you from Mexico. Um, this, this being the third show, I'm sure everyone around me was like, what the fuck is going on in this apartment? But anyway, um, I'm down here in uh, Playa del Carmen. Has anyone been to Mexico before? Yeah. Oh, mm. okay, a bunch of you. Oh, that's everyone with their cameras on. Oh my God, I love it. I had mentioned Latin men, and all of a sudden, Marco Torres appeared. He's like, bitch, I'm right here. Gay <laughs> estoy aquí. Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Dónde estás? Oh, he's on mute. This, the rest of the set's going to be in Spanish, just so you guys know. <laughs> Google Translate. It. All right, he's too, sl too slow. Hopefully, you're quicker with I'm the I'm in game. Ohio. Oh, <laughs> Pena. all right, moving on. No, okay. Um, I'm in Mexico. <laughs> I am in Mexico. I am in uh, Plaudo Carmen. Everyone keeps telling me, they're like, oh, you're not in real Mexico. You're in touristy Mexico. And I'm like, word? Because, you know, my neighbors got robbed. I had rampant diarrhea for a week. And I saw a man <laughs> selling donuts out of the trunk of his car. So that's about as real as I'm trying to get, okay? por favor. Glad we all hung in there. Poor AP had a technical difficulty. Some just fell. I saw that girl. It's all right. It's all right. Put it back up. You'll be fine. Nobody noticed. Um, <laughs> but you know, since I'm not in, I am, this is like a touristy part of Mexico, but I've been seeing some weird shit. I saw a man try on pants using his neck. Anyone see that? <laughs> Marco's like, yes. I mean, Marco, you have a circus background. I feel like you've seen it all. Um, <laughs> what's your background, Marco? Uh, I'm a host from a, a, another podcast, and I'm here to see a buddy of mine compete tonight. OK, I did not want you to promote yourself. I wanted to say what your <laughs> ethnic background was. <laughs> I'm, Puerto, I'm Puerto Rican. You're poor. Oh, I just talked about Puerto Rican. <laughs> you missed your time. That's why. You were like, I'm not for you, bitch. All right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm that I'm Puerto Rican. I'm a podcaster first, Puerto Rican second when a black person <laughs> likes to fuck Puerto Ricans. It's okay. I'm not going to Ohio. Um, it's all right. So yeah, you've seen you've seen a man try on pants with his neck? Yep. I, I, my, I showed my kids how to do that shit. My grandma taught me that. That's that's some third world shit. Apparently, also in New Jersey, because Kate's like, yeah, we do that all the time. <laughs> it's fucking weird. For those of you who haven't seen it, it just looks like a man is choking himself out with a pair of jeans. That's what it looks. It's very aggressive. It does not. I thought a man was trying to kill himself. I was like, hey man, we've all gained weight in quarantine. It's not that serious, all right? Well, just run around the block a couple times. <laughs> Really fucked up. Um, but this is, they're, they're right. This is a touristy part of Mexico. So I do want to share with you guys my top three favorite tourists that I've observed, okay? Number three, black men who wear Jordans on the beach. Oh, I love that. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you. Two things I miss about America, diversity and name brand shoes. So they really, <laughs> I mean it when I say I love seeing them. Number two, Skinny people who wear clothes in the pool. What are you hiding? <laughs> That's so strange. That's fat people culture. Don't appropriate it. <laughs> and then number one, men who randomly twirl their wives in the streets. I mean, what the fuck is going on? Nobody else is dancing, okay? We're not at a lot of competition. It's just a random twirl in the streets. And you know, to me, that just says your marriage is on the rocks. That's what I see, right? <laughs> you're not in a good, if your husband just randomly turns you around, things are fucked up. Cause this is what I imagine. I feel like I'm live action watching a scene from a murder doc that's gonna come out in a few years, right? 
And like the scene before that is the sister of the wife. And she's like, I don't know, Amy and Todd, they were so happy. They were dancing <laughs> in the streets of Mexico. <laughs> Next thing you know, three hours later, she's dead on the beach, right? And then they show up twirling like, mm, I, I killed it. And you see me in the background pissed. Like, I am not for this shit, right? And then the next scene is a cop being like, oh yeah, the old twirl your girl. We've seen it hundreds of times. <laughs> That's how you get murdered in Mexico. Um, last thing I want to say, I did get to real Mexico. Uh, it is terrifying. Holy fuck, man. Everyone thinks Mexico is scary because of the drugs and the cartel. No, it's scary because of the jungle and the pyramids, okay? <laughs> There are no cartels 90 feet in the air, okay? There's nothing. It's you and God and prayer. That's it. It's so scary. Um, I, went to, I went to go see some Mayan ruins. I don't know if anyone got to the ruins. Everyone just stayed on the... No, I mean... Alex is like, fuck you. Why Sorry, I my, my, uh, my cousin got married. So I would have gone to the ruins, but it was a big wedding thing. I wanted to go. Playa del Carmen, it's awesome. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you, okay, listen, this is what you missed out on. 20 minutes outside of the ruins, I got my period eight days early. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> God's taking the blood sacrifice seriously. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> That's what you missed, Alex. You missed your early period. Um, and I don't want to sure. run the light. Guys, you guys have been a lot of fun. Please give it up for our amazing host. Happy 420, everybody. Woo! Anyways, uh, give it up for Christiana Jackson one more time. Woo! And uh, coming to the Zoom stage, um, one of our favorite comics who has toured with Chelsea Handler. Please give it up for Olga Namer. Let me wait right before we start. Me? Uh, oh. Yeah, you oh, know, I've yeah. done like a. Uh, uh, so many Zoom shows, and never ever has there been another Alga. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and Zoom shows, uh, you know, Zoom shows, they're they're like anal because you know you guys enjoy it, but to me, it hurts. Um, <laughs> so I was, you know, I, I was uh, raised like uh, as an Orthodox Jew. And I got married at 17. My husband was 18 years older than me. Uh, <laughs> uh, woo! I got divorced. And you know, when I got divorced, they spread a rumor about me. They're like, oh, I heard it's because she's an anorexic alcoholic who can't cook. And it's like, how did they know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it bothered me. So I went to culinary school for two years. I was like, who can't cook now, huh? <laughs> me uh <laughs> it's hard to learn how to eat when you don't eat um <laughs> you, know, you know i don't know i'm healthy kind of i don't know people tell me that i look healthy they're like you look healthy and i'm always like i want to look healthy i want to look like i can't give blood um <laughs> <laughs> One time I went to go get blood and they're like, you, you can't give blood. I was like, it's happening. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm so skinny, they're like, no, you're a whore. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I, I really do. I take, you know, I, I take care of myself now. I think I treat, because I treat my body like a temple, okay? I only let Jewish men come inside me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do you ever hear this thing about jews uh you know they have sex through a hole in a sheet you heard this yeah okay how crazy is that because no jew would ever put a hole in a perfectly good sheet um, <laughs> i uh yeah i so i i um you know i i banged my I banged my I banged into a glass door that's what happened i don't know if you can see the bump it's very embarrassing but I, so this is, I went on a date, okay? And I was like, I don't want you to think that this is a pimple. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. I'd much rather you hear the truth that I banged into a glass door because I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what, dating is so hard. Oh, it's like, do you guys, do you know what negging is? Do you know this thing? I'll tell you. Okay. It's like when a guy's like mean to you, but secretly he's in love with you. And it's making things very confusing. Like, I have a huge crush on this guy, and he texts me. He's like, please don't text me. I don't like you. And it's like, <laughs> uh, does he not? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Then I saw him at a party, and he's like, get away from me, you psycho bitch. And I was <laughs> like, okay, he's obsessed. Um, yeah. No, you know, ended up uh, sleeping together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I raped him. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> If I was like, um, you know, if I was getting raped, God forbid, but if I was getting raped, I'd be like, when am I going to meet your mother? <laughs> Damn. Where <are you> going? <laughs> it is great. And that's why I date old guys, okay? Because they don't play games because they don't have time. They're, they're going to die. But... <laughs> They always do the thing, right? They like whip out a couple of themselves from when they're younger. They'll be like, oh, look, that was me when I was 30. And it's like, oh, damn, we should have fucked you when I was four. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, so like my therapist, she tells me that I have a problem saying no. And that's why she's still my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Like same time next week, and I'm just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I originally went to her because I couldn't. I had a problem breaking up with a boyfriend, and you know, I couldn't break up with. I broke. I ended up breaking up with him, but now I can't break up with her, and it's work because. My life is, has been worse because not only am I stuck in a bad relationship, it's costing me $50 a week. <laughs> Maybe that's also why I still can't say no because it's so cheap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, people tell me, why don't you go to a different therapist? And it's like, I don't want to pay. Um, anyway, cool. <laughs> so back to like uh I guess you know things I did you know have I did have unprotected sex recently which is you, you know I, I was wearing a mask <laughs> I'm not a psycho uh no condom but the guy he promised me that he does herpes but he also promised me he'll call so like one of them pop up in a week um <laughs> uh, yeah. He ended up calling me to tell me he has chlamydia. I was like, no, I gave it to you. Um, <laughs> they, uh, you know, I, I, they say, like, I had a pimple on my face, and I was like, oh, look, if I put semen on it, would it go away? It does. Okay. And I love oh. Yeah. I know that someone's going to go home and try it. Whoever said, <laughs> go home, stay home and try it because you're home. <laughs> <laughs> yes and they also say that semen is anti-aging right which is great because i'm gonna have a very young looking lower back um <laughs> yeah. everyone's like how old are you i just like, i'm like I just bought you know? <laughs> thank you guys so much yeah <laughs> Olga, everybody. She's one of our favorites. We love her so much. Uh, all right. So are you ready for your last comic, everybody? Come on. Let's bring up the energy level. Yeah. yeah. He's well worth the wait. Well, all the comics were. But uh, what's what's going on here? The thing's having a stroke. But he is the host of Hipsterocracy on the Hard Times Network and has two albums out on stand-up records and a third one coming out this summer. I highly recommend it. Everything he does is gold. Please welcome Johnny Taylor. Woo! Hey, everybody. How are you? Is there, can, can you hear me? Yes. You know, the... the, the, the yeah, I haven't done a Zoom show in a while. The, the, my favorite thing about doing Zoom shows 
is that you can blame bombing on like bad internet. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like a thing that, that's occurred. I did a Zoom show. This guy was bombing and uh, he kept going, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Everybody's like, yeah, dude, we can. We just hate it. Um, I, uh, I, I did a show. I did a, a Zoom show and uh, it was early on in the pandemic. And my first joke didn't work. And I was just all like, I'm breaking up. And I just like, <laughs> and I just hit leave. I was just yeah. the, the fuck out of there. I'm like, I don't even care if they ever contact me again. This is, this is fine. I don't, I don't care. Um, Zoom, uh, Zoom comedy is, is uh, the second most popular thing to do on a webcam during, uh, during this whole pandemic. Uh, and it makes a lot less than the first thing that's popular um the uh uh, time doesn't make sense anymore to me i don't know if anybody else is going through this where things that happened yesterday seem like they happened like a long time ago things that happened like last year seem like it just happened a week ago um i had a guy a lot of people are saying that they they want to start comedy well they like want to start doing stand-up after the panda it's weird i mean uh, it's a first off, it's a weird thing to try to do during a pandemic, but I think any like I've been I've been I'm encouraging when people are like I want to do stand up after the pandemic. I'm like, yeah, you should, you should, you should try it. You know, uh, if you want to do it, I think you at least owe it to yourself to try it. Um, get up on stage, you know, get up on stage a lot. You got to write a lot. You can't get discouraged if it goes poorly the first time. You just got to keep getting up as much as you can and just really dedicate a large portion of your time and your energy into really chasing your dreams. And if you do that, she's going to leave you. Uh, so, uh, so proud. She, she's the fuck out of there. So uh, I like to get married a lot. Uh, three up, three down. I retire the side in order. Uh, I like a good party. After uh, after my most recent divorce, I dated. Uh, I, went on, uh, I went on a date with a girl, went to coffee. I thought that was a good first date. This is way before the pandemic started. Um, so we went to, uh, went to coffee and the first thing she said to me, uh, is she, uh, it blew my mind. She said, it feels really good to be out. And I was just like, where the fuck were you? I just prior to this, you know? And she's like, you didn't mention that. And she says, no, it feels good to be on a date is what I mean. I was like, oh yeah, it feels, it feels good for me too. And she says, well, I went through a rough stretch recently. I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe explain, you know? And she says, well, uh, I was drinking quite a bit. And uh, one thing led to another, and I ended up doing crystal meth with my son. Right. I was just like, oh, no. Um, that's pretty fucking gross, you know? I mean, uh, you have a kid? Uh, that's disgusting. Uh, Should have swiped left. Um, yeah. I want to tell you guys uh, a story about uh, my, my favorite week of my elementary school experience. Uh, it was the week the challenger launched. Um, <laughs> I mean, it ended weird. It ended weird for sure. But the, the week leading up to it was hella tight because uh, we didn't have any work. We didn't have any schoolwork. It was just uh, no homework. It was just us learning about NASA, learning about the space program. We learned about astronaut. We learned about uh, Neil Armstrong. We learned the first man on the moon. We learned about Kristen McAuliffe, who's going to be the first teacher in space. We learned about Sally Ride, first woman in space. We were geeked up about it. 29 out of the 30 kids in my class said that they wanted to be astronauts when they grow up. Uh, one kid wanted to be a chef. Uh, outlier. Uh, I think uh, his dad was like a crew chief at Arby's or something. Or something. Um, wanted to like continue the family tradition. And so, uh, but we were excited, you know, but the best part about the week was that uh, the day of the launch, we were going to go to school two hours early and we we're going to watch the launch live on television they were going to wheel one of those carts and we were going to get to watch it and uh so that morning we all woke up hella early uh some of we, we were super excited so a lot of the kids had cut out paper patches that said nasa taped it to their shirts taped it to the sleeve of their shirts one kid wore a helmet to school uh he always wore a helmet but he also did that day um so we were super excited <laughs> to, to, to go in there and uh so we get there and uh we're all seated. They roll the TV in and then it, it launches, you know, the, the, the challenger launch. I feel like I'm, what, what, I feel like I just went to space. What's happening? 
Oh my god. Is this a troll? Are you guys like, let's give them space sound effects during a shit? Um, so it launches up in the air and uh we're all watching it. Like one kid like stood up and cheered. One kid started dancing like Michael Jackson. That was appropriate at the time. It was 86. <laughs> Uh, uh, one kid started crying it's just like the wonder of science uh, but most of us were just cheering and so it, it gets pretty far up in the air and uh, then it just comes apart you know and uh, here's the thing none of the teachers ever warned us that that was even in the realm of possibility that that it could just come apart so we're like we're just watching it and we're just like oh huh I guess it just kind of comes apart at the end you know and uh <laughs> So, you know, we thought it was part of it. And then uh, the kid next to me, a kid named Kyle, uh, no shit, I swear to God, he says this. He, he's looking up at it and he goes, confetti, <laughs> which uh, in retrospect is the funniest thing I've ever heard anybody say yeah. as a tragedy was unfolding in real time. He, <laughs> he said confetti. <laughs> and then we're all just like, yeah, it kind of does look like confetti. And then the teacher... The teacher goes, uh, it's not confetti, Kyle. Mm. And uh, so I'm like, well, what is it? And I swear to God, he says this. I, I say, what is it? And he goes, bodies. And uh, <laughs> right, you know, shocking <laughs> thing to hear as an eight-year-old. You know, at that point, I just like raised my hand. And I was like, I was like, yo, can I change what I want to be when I grow up? I, <laughs> I, uh, I think I want to be a chef. Um, yeah, they don't explode i uh i i i came in my own face one time uh <laughs> our, our, we're, we're working blue i uh, i did I, I came in my own face uh i didn't do it on purpose i did it by accident but uh you know in retrospect i don't know which one's worse uh, you do it. On, you do it on purpose. You're just kind of kinky, you know. But uh, if you do it on accident, you, you're just a bad shot. So, uh, I I want to I want to talk to to you guys and say I was alone on my couch for five minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> do the math. If you're alone on your couch for five minutes, at some point, like you're gonna you're gonna touch yourself, you know. And so when you touch yourself, you got to make a choice, you know. Especially as a guy, it's like, do I get up now? And go get cleaning supplies, <laughs> risk risk losing the moment, you know? <laughs> or do I just like let the chips fall where they may, you know, shoot it up here and then do the the hop to the shower while trying to keep it all on your body, you know. So I uh, I'm a gambler. <laughs> you know, shoot it up here, do the hop. <laughs> uh, Must have got super excited towards the end. Uh, cause I overshot my target by, uh, probably about a foot. I almost came directly in my own mouth. Uh, <laughs> I know learned something. I learned something about myself. I, uh, I, uh, pursed my lips when I jack off. So it just kind of bounced off my bottom <laughs> lips, cascaded in my beard. Uh, I was like confetti. Um, <laughs> yeah, mm. we got there. We got there. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh apologize for any bad dreams people might have out there um <laughs> i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna do one more uh I, I, here's the weird thing i had to take uh i had a situation i had to pee i had to pee in a grocery store uh that's a weird place to pee because there's not always a clear sign that says restrooms on it you know uh so you have to kind of find it and so i had to ask somebody where do i pee and they're like you got to go through these double doors and i i'm like can't am i allowed because everybody was going through the double doors had like aprons on had name tags uh he's like yeah just go back there go find it so i go back there uh there's no uh there's no uh clear sign this is restroom so i have to start ear hustling trying to hear mm -hmm. bathroom noises uh so i so I, I go in the right door so i hear a sink that's a bathroom noise i decide to go in uh and i walk in on a guy uh i don't know if anybody's had this i walk on a in on, on a guy uh, talking to himself in the bathroom mirror uh, it's, it was very strange. I kind of burst open the door right in the middle of him going, that was really scary. And so I'm just like, what the fuck did I miss? You know, 20, 20 seconds prior, like mm -hmm. some shit went down in here and I have no idea what to expect. So, uh, but I have to pee. So I go to the urinal and I realized that I'm at the urinal peeing as hard and as fast as I can 
because I don't want whatever he's scared of to get me. I'm just like, <laughs> we got, we, we don't have much time. We could, it could still be in here. Um, <laughs> so I go back in to the grocery store because I had to shop, you know, that's why I was there. So I noticed this adorable little family. It's just this mom and her kid. The kid's just sitting in the cart looking up at the mom. The kid's the most well-spoken kid I've ever heard. The kid, uh, the kid goes, mother, I'm terribly hungry. May I please have some grapes? And uh, the mom just looks right at her kid and goes, nope. And then starts eating grapes herself. And I'm just like, wow, what a, what a monster. Like, why would you be like that? And uh, then I'm like a couple aisles over. It's maybe a few minutes later. And I'm walking this way. And they're walking this way. And the kid sounds a little bit more desperate now. The kid's like, mother, I'm famished. I uh, mean, please have some grapes, mother. And uh, the mom goes, nah. And then she just keeps eating grapes. And I'm like, wow, that's the fucking worst mom. I've ever seen in my life. Um, I hope I never see her again. And then uh, as Faye would have it, I'm behind them in line. Uh, so we're waiting to check out. And uh, the kid's crying now. The kid's like, mom, please, I'm so hungry. Man, please have some grapes. And the mom says, no. And then the mom's like throwing grapes up in the air and like catching it. And I'm like, wow, she's just like mocking her kid now. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the mom is like, oh, I forgot something. And uh, she, she like runs back into the grocery store to go get it. Uh, and so I just turned to this kid and I'm like, yo, like, here's your chance, you know, eat some grapes. Mm -hmm. And the, the kid looks at me and the kid's like, sir, if I eat these grapes, my mother's going to be terribly upset with me. And so I just grab some grapes off the bunch and I just start feeding it to the kid from my hand. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, a kid have an allergic reaction to eating grapes before. Uh -huh. but, uh, <laughs> It happens way faster than you think it's going to. Uh, you guys look scared. You guys look, you, look, you guys look scared for the kid. I got to tell you, the kid's fine. Uh, I hope. I dropped my shit and I ran out of the store. Uh, through the parking lot, across the street, into a Mexican restaurant, where I just ended up going into the restroom. And I was like, that was really scary. Right as somebody walked in on me. And I'm like, fuck, I'm that guy now. This is like Inception. Hey, you guys have been fantastic. So much fun. Thanks, you guys. Be good. Yeah. 22, everyone. Uh, a nice guys show. Let's give it up for all of our performers. Takeda Love. <laughs> Danny Suggs. <laughs> Christiana Jackson, all the name are we? Do we still have a, a crowd here? Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming to um, the Las Vegas 420 Rampantly Comedy Festival. Um, and. Uh, we're gonna have next, another nice next guy nice guy show. show. It's May third. This evening and the rest of the festival, they're going all week, and it's gonna be great. Hey, thanks, thanks guys. guys. Have a great night. Bye, everyone. Thank, you, Thank guys. you so much. Good night. Good night.